The eCal2 print to cut feature allows you to print your own patterns on your printer and cut it out on the Sizzix Eclipse. So let's get started. Before your first print to cut, let's go ahead and check a couple settings that might help you. Go under Cutter in the menu, and then Cutter Settings. And then in the upper right hand corner, you'll see registration marks. By default, it's set to two registration marks. We'll want to set it to three, and this will get a better result with print to cut. And go ahead and click Save. The other thing, if you have never done so, you probably want to calibrate your laser one time. Because the laser is what is used to uh, determine where it's going to cut. We move the laser around on the registration marks and that tells the machine where to cut the print to cut sheet. So go ahead and under cutter, click on laser calibration setup. And then we'll want to load the mat with a little piece of paper. Once the mat is loaded, go ahead and click next. Now we need to position the blade so you can cut an X. And then it'll tell you, give you the steps for the next step of how to do it. So you can either arrow on the screen, which goes a little ways, or you can shift arrow on the keyboard, up or down or right or left. Once you get it placed on the paper that you want it, go ahead and click on Next. And it just cut an X. So now you want to position the laser pointer to the center of that X and click the Finish button. Now the same thing, you'll want to move it around until it's to the center of that X. If you want to go smaller increments, go ahead and click hold the Control key while you're arrowing up or down or left and right. And when you have it where you want it set, click Finish. I'm not going to click Finish um, as I've already calibrated my laser. So I'm going to cancel out of this. I purposely did not show the video of this process as it's fairly straightforward. And now we're ready to perform our first print to cut. So the first one we'll try with an SVG file. So this is a gift card sleeve file from Simply Crafty SVGs and it is a free file. So we're going to put it up here in the left hand corner and the reason I'm doing that is that there's a limited print to cut space, 8.5 by 11. If you look in the upper right hand corner here, clicking on the preview icon, you'll see this is the area that you can print to cut. So you kind of want to keep it within that area and a little bit away from the edges. So the registration marks, because th those are what will be used so the machine knows where to cut it after it's print. So we'll close that for now. And we're just going to move them a little bit to the right here. So instead of having the plain blue color, I want to make this a little pattern color. So I'm going to use the pattern. So if you didn't know, let's go ahead and click to expand the group, which includes a score line. So we're going to come down to the, the actual sleeve portion and click on the right hand side for this color palette and then for the fill hit the drop down and click pattern. So there's some included patterns but I'm going to, to use one of the patterns I loaded. So right here I'm going to use that. I'm going to preview it. It takes a moment to preview the first time you load a pattern. I think it's a little bit small so I'm going to change that to, this is how you can change the size and then preview it again. I like that size. So I'll click OK. So now that's set with a pattern. It looks like the bottom color is OK. It actually matches quite nicely but let's make it just a little bit darker. So up in the upright corner I'll just change the color a little bit. In order to set this up for print to cut there's not much more that we need to do. Each one is set to cut, which is okay. It'll still print it out, you'll see. This one's set to cut, but I do want to set my score lines, which is this top portion in the group, to score. But now let's go ahead and click on the preview in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to expand this. 
And you'll see it says show cut lines, show printable, don't worry about that, and show score lines. And then the print margins. So we're within all the margins and uh, it looks like we're good to go to print. So go ahead and click done. And then what we're going to do is print it first. So click on file, print. Then I have my printer and you can go into the properties of your printer and change the uh, the quality of the print. We want to make sure it says print registration marks and make sure that's checked. Click OK. And then now it's printing. Now that it's printed, we want to line it up on the mat. Now, what I suggest is that you line it as straight as possible. If you don't, sometimes that's where the printing at goes a little bit off, so as vertical as possible. Let's see if I can get that right. And then we'll go back to eCal2 to load the mat. We'll go ahead and set it to the Eclipse. So click on Cutter from the menu and then Print to Cut. You want to ch change your settings here if you need to. I'll leave it at Medium Cardstock Pressure. Then click Next. If it's not loaded, it'll prompt you to load. I hadn't loaded, so I'm going to load Matt, but you could do it up here as well before. And then go ahead and click Next. And then uh, this is the point we're going to line up the lasers in the center of each registration mark. You'll start with, you'll do it in order from one, two, and three. So on the paper, you'll see one's in the upper left hand corner. And then two will be in the upper right hand corner and then three will be in the lower right hand corner. So I'm going to switch over to the machine so you can see what it looks like. So as you can see the laser is to the left of the first registration mark. So we'll use the arrow keys to move it to the center. And you can use a combination of arrow keys go a little bit further. Uh, shift plus arrow key will make it move even further so you probably want to use control plus the arrow keys to maneuver around. So I'm going to move it to the right and you see I need to go just to the right a little bit so I'm going to hold the control key and go right once and do you see how it kind of disappeared? You can see the light. I'm going to go left again and you can kind of see the light but once I go right up and it disappears that tells you you're in the middle. So you can either hit the next button on the screen or hit the enter key on your keyboard. I just hit the enter key. Then I'll go to the next reg registration mark. So again you can see this second registration mark. It's just slightly off. It looks like I have to go up just a little bit. So we'll just hit the control arrow up and see if we can hit that center. Ah, it just disappeared, so there we go. We go ahead and hit enter on the keyboard or next in this on the screen. And then the last one, if you look at it, it needs to go up and to the right a little bit. So we're gonna use the control plus arrow keys to go up a little bit. So I'm gonna go right. A little bit down, so I'm gonna go up. And there you go, it kind of disappeared. I'm just kind of double checking and hitting enter. So now I'm going to unload it and you can see it cut around the area properly. So we have this and this and the score lines are on there as well. So now I'm going to show you how to print a PNG file that you import. So we're going to click on File, Import, and the PNG file I'm using is a free file from creativefabrica.com. It's from the cute, the free cute Monsters kit. So we chose uh, Monster 7. It's a very cute file. They have a lot of cute files over there. So I'm going to size it down holding the Shift key so it maintains scale. If I wanted to print it as is, I could just go ahead and print and cut as is. 
because it does bring in the cut and print layer. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Every once in a while when you print and cut, it could be off a little bit because maybe you didn't pay, put the paper on straight, anything like that. So I'm going to do two versions of this. We're going to duplicate it. I'm going to do duplicate the lever, the layer in the lower right hand corner. Then I'm just going to move the duplicate down. We're going to go zoom in just a smidgen here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can differentiate between the two. So the bottom one is the one I'm going to put a shadow layer on this. And the reason I'm doing this is if it's off just a little bit with just white paper, it'll show. You'll see the white edge. But if you just add a little shadow layer to it, um, it you can it, it almost can hide the white. It'll create kind of a bleed effect. So what we do is I'm going to highlight this bottom layer and click on effects and shadow layer. And you see by default it's gray. It puts this layer around the image. I don't want it to be gray. I kind of want to match up the color. I'm just going to kind of play around over here. Let's see. And there's kind of the right tone. Something like that. So I'm going to click OK and you can see it puts that shadow layer. So if it's off just a little bit, you won't notice as much because the color is similar to the the color of the outside of the, the image here. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And then over in the layer panel, you will see the shadow layer in its own new layer. So now we have that shadow layer here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Put, I'm going to move that up a little bit here. So now if I go to preview, it shows the cut lines. And again, let me zoom in. So you can see it has cut lines on the shadow layer as well as the inner layer. We don't want the cut lines on the shadow layer. We just want that to be a printout. So we're going to go to the shadow layer. And we're going to click on the wrench over here and cut line type will change to print. So now when we preview, you can see that the cut lines in red are only around the image. So this little black line tells me that it's going to still print out to that. So it'll print that shadow layer. So let's go ahead and click done. Let's go ahead and print this out. So we'll go print. Make sure it says print registration marks and then we'll go ahead and print it out. So here's the little one that I didn't put a shadow layer around. Fortunately it was pretty centered so it looks okay. And then here's the bigger one and if it were off a little bit you can see I don't see really many white edges. So they actually both print out but it's a nice little tip just in case it is off a little bit. For this last example we'll use um, a shape from the library the eCal library and then some text to add to a tag. So from the library I'm going to come down and look at tags and here we'll just take this first tag and I'm going to close this window. I'm going to rotate this tag so it's sideways. Let's see if I can get it in the right place here. I'm holding the shift key down as I rotate so it rotates in increments. I wanted it completely horizontal. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to make it, let's see, 3.5 inches wide. And now I want to add a color to it. So I'll click over here in the palette and I'll select pattern. And I have a pattern I had in mind for this. And I know it looks decent at 3 inches size. So we'll, we can preview just to ver validate what it looks like. And I like what it looks like, so let's go ahead and click OK. Now we'll add some text, a happy birthday text. 
It's not going to go. Happy birthday. I have it on the font already that I want, which is milkshake font. I'm going to squish it together just a little bit. I don't want it to be a pattern because it's not showing up. It's just going to blend into the back. We're going to change it to a color up here. And this is a decent color for that. Now we just need to size it down. So I'll hold the shift key as I'm dragging this corner in to size it uniformly. And then I'm going to highlight this. Oops, and click on right here, line to middle. Middle. Looks like I aligned it. It snapped kind of in for me. So now what I want to do is I don't, I just want to cut out the tag portion, but I want happy birthday to just print on the tag. If I click on preview right now, you'll see that it's set to cut because it's in red. So in order for that, we just want to set that to print. I'm going to go down to the lower right hand corner on the layer. Just select that. And then come to the right here um, to the cut cut style. The little wrench. We're going to change it to just to print. Print to cut print. So now when we preview, you'll see that it's in black, meaning that it's just going to print out and the tag will cut out. I do want to note before I go any further, I didn't note this in any other section, but you might want to do multiple print to cuts. As you can see, there's this whole big page that is empty. Um, for my examples here, I'm printing each page separately, but I would actually do multiple print to cuts so you can get the optimal space out of the paper. Um, but you know, it does take a little planning, but if you do multiple things, it's easy to do. So let me go ahead and close this preview options. And then let's go ahead and start. Let's go ahead and cut it. Well, actually, let's print it first. So make sure print registration marks is checked. Click OK. And then once it prints, uh, we'll go ahead and send it to the machine to cut. And here it is. This is where you would benefit, you see the edges, where you would benefit with a little bit of a, a shadow layer. As you can see, the print to cut feature actually expands the capabilities of the Sizzix Eclipse. I hope that was, this was helpful and thank you for watching.